Welcome to For Formula One's Sake, the podcast F1 deserves. I'm Drew Stern and this is the FF1S Preview. We'll be bringing you everything you need to know about the forthcoming Australian Grand Prix, but not before we've heard from you, our lovely listeners, viewers and correspondents. We're expecting a grilling on the latest F1 issues of the day and maybe even about the racing, although let's be honest, that's the least exciting bit at the moment. That's all to come. Just as an aside, I just thought, no one does a joke about Australians being upside down anymore. Is that just because we're all more intelligent as a species, or is that the internet? You haven't got to my, pre- you haven't got to my preview yet. You should see the stuff I cut out of my preview. <laughs> <laughs> Here comes Listener's Corner. Shitting hell. Watch out for the walls, or you'll end up like Lance Stroll. Phil, do you want to pick yeah, a question? Yeah, let's, pick, let's pick get stuck into some. I am going to start with a good one. Uh, Wayne Dwops, which I'm sure is his real name. Is it time for F1 to adopt a promotion relegation style system in order to allow young talent through and to deter drivers who are clearly not interested, looking at you, Lance, from clogging up a seat? Well, didn't I once upon a time... In fact, Drew, wasn't it with one of the State of F1s I did with you, which is where I had this idea that all drivers should have a maximum tenure in Formula 1 of 10 years. Yeah. So they're allowed 10 years. So if you're getting to the end of your 10 years and you haven't won the championship, you can take a few years out and come back. But you can't. it's like you can't do more than two terms as a US president before Trump changes the Constitution. So I think that would be great because that would, that would mean people like Hamilton would have to have retired by now and other people also. I think we should get rid of the dead weight. I'm all for this. Uh, yeah, I'm all for my idea. Yes. <laughs> I that I like your idea too. I do think there might be something in this relegation promotion thing where if you're in the bottom three drivers of F1 at the end of the season, congratulations, you're down to F2 for next year. And the top three F2 drivers come up and take their places. Or maybe they just go into like a draft style system. I have a feeling, I did uh, this as a state of F1 once, but about teams, like a football division. Like, you know, or like, so, oh, yeah, yeah, you might have done that. Rings a bell, actually. And I think all of these things, yeah. Are- so the whole team just comes up, like Arden or, or Carlin yeah. or whoever come up from. I think it's a great I idea. I think that'd be good. If Ferrari have a particularly bad run, and well, mind you, Williams would now be like but they'd be the Vauxhall <laughs> Conference in like Nor- Norfolk Formula V or something, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, uh, you know. It's a great idea. I, I do think, in all seriousness, the, the, the notion of having F1, F2, F3, whatever, and it not actually being a, a process to go from one to the other, it's just this idea that you go, well, if you're good at F2, you get an F1 drive, except if you're shit at F1, you can stay. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, if you've got a lot of money, <laughs> all rules are yeah. off. Terry, you want to pick a question? Sure. I will go for Will Bowen, who said, Was Hamilton working for Ferrari by attacking so hard at the end? Surely the best tactic would have been to not challenge Norris, catch and pass Berber, and have a bit of a fight with the McLaren. Well, I don't know necessarily about that particular thing, but colour me cynical, but I did think that Lewis Hamilton helping him out of the car at the end and being all like, Oh, well done, mate. Oh, well done, your first race. You're so special. I think if he hadn't signed for Ferrari, he wouldn't have done that. (laughs) <laughs> you think he's just ingratiating himself with it. he's like right all of Italy's going to be on the Oli Behrman oh yeah train. and you, you know me that. some of you, that you know Hamilton's a shrewd operator and you know that the Italians love a bit of heart and wine and so I just think I just think they would have gone <laughs> oh he's really good actually I forgot I hated him and we're quite a racist country what, what? wow well that's that's your Ferrari drive out the window uh, they can't steal what I haven't got what? <laughs> <laughs> I'll take this question from Colin McMahon. Best bit of the race was Stroll hitting the wall for no reason and the team asking him to drive it back. Do you think they wanted him to drive the recovery truck as it's the only thing he should be driving anywhere near an F1 weekend? <sighs> Seems harsh. I mean, we've touched fair? on this already, haven't we? Like, In my long series that I'm enjoying of jobs in F1 that I'd be shit at or good at is... There is a moment where when the team radio cutter said, oh, could you drive it back? And you knew that they hadn't yet seen the, the camera of the, the crash. And I was like, I think I've been in that situation where someone's like, well, is it salvageable? And I'm just, <laughs> the whole office is on fire. And I'm like, uh, no. <laughs> I wonder if they weren't bothering to watch him. If they, they were just like, oh, it's only Lance. They were just literally sitting there at the back of the office, like reading a magazine, smoking a cigarette. And they just heard a beep that was like, oh, Lance has crashed. Lance, can you bring it back? 
or they watched or no. they watched him crash and they're like right let's let's watch yeah. this <laughs> watch me fuck with the new boy <laughs> it's like yeah he is your son <laughs> fucking yeah him. your dad's asked you to drive it back <laughs> <laughs> Phil you want to take another yeah question? I'll have another one um 81 says despite a long pit stop that no one saw surely Ricardo is done now I think he should retire at what point do you think yeah yeah he was perfectly decent at Red was Bull was he Good. I don't even think he was anymore no he was he won some it has been so long that it's hard to remember but he was he was winning races and he was pretty decent and whatever it was he had it has gone whether it's the way the cars have gone or whether it's something in his mind he's lost it and he's had I mean he wasn't great at Renault he's somehow lucked into a race at McLaren uh, a win at McLaren but generally he was rubbish there he's had a year and a bit at um, whatever that team's called now Toro oh God, Rosso I forgot about Renault and it's just like uh, give it up give it up give the, give the posi- give it to somebody good if Red Bull had anybody else in their academy they should be giving that that drive to I him f- I'm frankly surprised Sonoda is there and Sonoda is, is definitely got the upper hand on Ricardo. so yeah he, sh- he should be gone I feel like I might have made this joke before but I feel like what's happened the only thing that makes sense for what's happened to his skill and talent level is an episode of Quantum Leap is happening and Sam Beckett has jumped into Daniel Ricciardo he can't jump out until he wins a race Oh, but he won a race. Oh, no, he's trapped. Oh, boy. So he did, well, yeah, he did so win a race, yeah. Maybe he's come back again. <laughs> oh, not you again. <laughs> it's a repeat. It was on Dave. <laughs> Terry, you want to grab a question? Um, we've kind of covered those bottom two. I think we've kind of covered them all, haven't we, actually, in the other race, in the other podcast? We could do a general strategy-heavy one. That's quite a good one. Okay. Not, not, not specifically Making about that. that Joshua one, Jake Stewart says, Do we like strategy-heavy races? I find Magnussen backing up the field so selectively in one sector genuinely interesting to watch. Maybe I'm just getting old. No, I do. Uh, I think if, you're, if you've not just got the race on in the background and you're actually properly watching it, and it's not just like, Oh, car overtake car! Then, yes, a good, a good strategy where you're not sure what's going to happen and, and it's all going to come together at the end is, is very, very satisfying to watch. But not if the strategy is, can you go so slowly that your shit teammate can catch up? No, I, I quite no. like it. <laughs> I quite like it. It's, it's frustrating if it's done in a manner where it's just like, well, something's gone shit with the track or the, tr- or the, uh, or the cars and they just can't get past. But as was proven, eventually you could get past Magnussen. You just had to be a bit ballsy about it. Suck like um, I'll, t- I'll tell you who would have got past him. Ollie Behrman. Oh. The single greatest racing driver that there's ever been. I think he's the best racing driver to have never won the championship. I think you might be right. Although I'm fairly sure we said that about Jess Hawkins a couple of seasons ago. What, so they've gone from the dark. We know? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> a very underrated Formula 1 driver he was too. Thanks for your questions. Coming up after the ad break, it's Phil Troman's Grand Prix Preview. Remember, you can listen ad-free at The Whinging Mustache, our new subscription. Just sign up through Apple Podcasts, head to our page, and you'll see a link to join. Or you can just say thanks for all the content by donating a one-off pint or three to us at ff1s.com forward slash pint, pint, pint. Now, let's head down under. Not in a sexy way, Christian, but to the beautiful city of Melbourne. The next race is the Australian Grand Prix, and here with everything you need to know is Phil Tromans with the FF1S Preview. The Australian Grand Prix has been held at no fewer than 23 different venues in its history. But when the race organisers and the Conservatives at Albert Park first agreed to stage the race in Melbourne, they realised that with a little understanding, they could find the perfect blend of great racing and beautiful scenery. At this point, I'd planned a brilliantly clever joke about how the circuit was named after someone famous called Albert Park, but it seems genuinely like there's never been anyone famous called Albert Park, which seems insane. If you know of anyone, write in and I'll get it in the script for 2025. Anyway, Albert Park the Park is actually named after Prince Albert, husband of Queen Victoria and a man known for having a piece of metal shoved through his penis so he could attach it to his trouser button. Legend has it that Prince Albert's knob was 3.28 miles long and had 14 corners, which coincidentally matches the circuit named after the park named after him. 
Phil Facts. The Australian Grand Prix has run since 1928, and two drivers share the most number of wins. Michael Schumacher, who we all know, and Lex Davison, who we don't. In fairness, you might know him if you're Australian. He's part of the famous Davison racing family that also includes Diana, Alex, Will, James, Kylie, Bouncer and Mrs Mangle. <laughs> Whoever wins in Melbourne this weekend will win the Lex Davison Trophy, the highest honour in Australian motorsport, which was made in Britain, just like Australia. Last year's Australian Grand Prix was won by Max Verstappen, and he'll win this year too because he's going to win every race unless somebody messes with him or his car. I'm not telling you to do that. Anyway, the current race lap record was set last year by Sergio Perez before his free fall into mediocrity. Will anyone beat his time of 1 minute 20.235? Things to watch for this weekend include who's driving the second Ferrari, will Carlos Sainz complete his recovery, or will staggering gingerly into the Saudi paddock less than 24 hours after major surgery have proved a mistake? Will Oli Behrman return to cement his claim on a future seat, or will he join Liam Lawson in the corner of a pub reminiscing about when they could have been contenders? And will Christian Horner and or Helmut Marko still have a job? We don't know because we're recording this preview quite some time before you'll hear it, but we'll definitely know when we wake up obnoxiously early to watch the race and throw some shrimp on the barbie, or whatever other doll your child has left lying around. <laughs> Is it on a Sunday? That's the big question. Is it on a fucking Sunday? I, well, I mean, it sort of is, but it's also in the middle of the night. So who actually... Oh. Shall I look it up? I think it nominally is, but it's not like a proper... But Sunday proper morning. Sunday. It's like a, you get up at five in the it's morning. It's 4 a.m. Okay, that's perfect. I did not like two Saturday <laughs> Grand Prix. <laughs> it's at 4 a.m. Oh, no, wait. Is that... No, it is. Oh, fuck. It's at 4 a.m. 4 a.m. Oh, I might go out the night. That's like the worst time I might morning. go out the night before and come home for the race. <laughs> Maybe they're showing it in Bergheim. They, they, always, they often do. I didn't realise until I started researching this that they'd, they'd been quite so many different venues for this. Is that Australian true? Twenty three? Is that genuinely true? All of the, everything you heard in that was true. Most of what you heard in that was true. <laughs> the number of venues is true. Twenty three. It was actually held at um, Bathurst once. Wow! Before F one times. Uh, that count. But um, only, that would be great. Only counts since nineteen fifty. That's it from us. We'll be back next week when we'll be looking back at the Australian Grand Prix and wondering what unbelievably silly things is going to happen next in Formula One. In the meantime, check out our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash for f one sake, and follow us on Twitter at for f one sake. Oh, and please subscribe to our YouTube channel to see what you've just heard in full HD. If you're already watching, then hi! Type in for f one sake to all the usual platforms and see what comes up. Terry, where can people buy merch? ff1s.com forward slash shop shop shop. Thanks for listening. I've been Drew Stern. Goodbye. Goodbye, Bye. everybody. <laughs> well, let's not let's not make that a thing. <laughs>